in all honesty, there's not a whole lot of dexterity games that I really enjoy, but the ones that do it really well, I find myself playing over and over and over again, and that was with the game Magic Maze. I'm going to be talking about both that game and Magic Maze on Mars, the sequel to a Magic Maze. Both play very similar, but would have some different contrasting things that you can do in them. And the basis of this dexterity game is no speaking and moving down pawns on a board or resources to get to a certain objective and complete it. Each player is going to have their own unique directional card or token that will allow them to do certain certain things with certain pawns or certain color resources, attempting them to move in coordination or cooperatively with other players to get to locations, either turning them in or acquiring resources to then escape a certain area. Magic Maze plays like a fantasy style game using a rogue and a barbarian and so on and so forth, and Magic Maze on Mars uses resources that will allocate into specific pools, creating colonies on Mars, and then allowing players to use these those colonies to transport people from one place to another to score objectives. Each one of these games also will get progressively more difficult, adding more rules and more options for players as the games continue to uh, progress. So in your first round, it's going to be rather simple and you can speak. And in the next round, it adds more rules and people stop being able to speak. The timers start getting to be allowed to be flipped because it all is all timed at the same time. And you'll start noticing new rules pop up every single time you play the game, creating a more difficult challenge for you. Both games, having been uh, dexterity in nature and have this own unique twist to them, all function similarly though. So depending on what you're more interested in, maybe you'll want to pick them up. But both of them actually do hold a place at the gaming table and you may want to pick up both. I'll show you exactly what they look like and how they play lightly down below and I explain each of them. Then we'll come up and I'll discuss them, which one's my favorite, why, what mechanics I like the best in a game like this, and whether or not you should pick this up. Uh, Magic Maze or Magic Maze on Mars currently down below in the description for your purchasing pleasure. Available at retail stores everywhere. So let's go ahead and get into Magic Maze and Magic Maze on Mars. Two separate games that feel and play similarly, but are definitely different as well. And we'll talk about them in order. The first one being Magic Maze, the original, the classic. This one is a very popular game and most people have heard of this game in the modern board game industry, but we'll go through it anyway for those of you who haven't. In this game, you're going to be playing as a barbarian, as a rogue, warrior, thief, that kind of thing, and you'll be placing them down in these areas here to begin. Again, you're going to get a sand timer, which, duration, which is basically the duration of the game, and if this runs out, you lose. This is going to be the board that tells you uh, you're able to utilize your vortex spaces, which can transport you to different locations, as well as to let you know that each of these characters here need to get those, to those symbols in order to succeed the scenario. You have these tokens here, which are going to be useful in the advanced version of the game, as well as whenever you get a character to one of these spaces here, you'll be able to flip the timer over, and when you do that, that, it'll give you more time to progress throughout the game, but however, once you've used it once, you can't use it again. These are all action tokens or action uh, tiles here, and depending on the number of players in the game you're playing with will determine how many of these you get. And of course, in a three-player game, which will be my example, you're going to get three of these, denoted by the number three on the bottom. You'll shuffle them up and deal them out to each player. Uh, you'll notice in this specific game here, and of course in this one, you're going to get just enough actions that you're able to completely use the entire game for that number of players, but what they less player count, you're going to have more actions to do. So in this case here, one player is going to be able to move all of the meeples down, and you're always going to make sure that you face these all north. So even if you're playing on this side, you'll have here. If you're playing over here, you'll have it like this, so that they're all facing the same direction. This player can move, move these guys down, and they can move any of them down. Uh, this guy over here can move them all to the left, and this guy over here can move them to the right, and can move them up. And it's simultaneous. You can continually play this game. Uh, in every regardless of turn order. It's all happening all at the same time as the timer is running. This is a game of quick dexterity, getting the pieces to where you need them to go. You'll also notice that there's actions. And in the base game, for the basic first scenario for this game, you're going to have three actions. The first one is that you can move a player pawn, if you're this player, uh, from where it is currently located to a vortex space 
of its color, no matter where it's at. However, you can't do this after all of these characters has, have achieved their items. This one over here allows you to search. So if you have a character color that is next to a space with one of those symbols, the little magnifying glass, you'd be able to search in this deck uh, of tiles here. Now for the first base scenario, you're only going to need these nine here, so you can remove those. And when you have that character there, you'll notice that you can go ahead and take one of these and you're gonna place it. You're gonna try and place the arrow to correspond with the area in which you're locating the, the hero, and thusly you'll continue. And the last one here is going to be the escalator. So for instance, this character, this player can move the green down one, then can use the escalator here, and then uh, once again, because he is green and has a magnifying glass, he can draw a new tile, uh, line it up with the arrow and place it down so that it is corresponding and then this player over here could go ahead and move it and that's basically how it works the other thing you'll start to notice in this game is the spaces here that represent the little weapons meaning that yellow will need to get here and green will get to need to get green space orange will need to get orange space and purple will get to the or uh, purple space when that happens uh, this is going to flip over and the exits will now be unlocked and in this specific scenario you're looking to find the exit which is going to be this this one here. So if this board uh, was represented, I don't know, right here, and let's say that all these characters got to their spaces, then they're all just going to need to escape through this hatch here, and when that happens, you win. If this timer runs out beforehand, you lose, and if it's about to run out, you can go ahead and bring a character over here, like I said, spend one of these tokens, and then flip the timer just before it runs out, giving you more time. And that's basically the entire aspect of the game. Now, of course, with this game here, there is a lot I mean a lot of additional scenarios and rules. You'll start finding new tiles that are going to give you some unique different uh, changes to the game, whether it be security cameras that will prevent you from doing certain things, uh, this magical orb which will allow the purple character to see ahead into the future, drawing more tiles, uh, spaces that only the uh, orange character can get through, the small dwarf character, and so on and so forth, providing more gameplay, more variation. Another thing to note too, remember you cannot use uh, these spaces, these vortex spaces here when all players have achieved their end goal, which is getting to these specific areas here. And also to note that they all need to get to their specific exit, which will happen in later scenarios as well. For the first scenario, you need to get to the purple one, but uh, as these scenarios continue, each of them will have their own unique place to move through and to get out of. And if you play even farther down the line, you're actually going to, whenever you uh, flip over this timer, you'll actually be rotating abilities so that each player will get to play different abilities throughout the game when the timers have flipped over, which is a really cool and unique little aspect to the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. We actually did a full playthrough of the game, so if you actually want to see it played on our live stream, I'll have a link down below for Magic Maze. Let's talk about Magic Maze on Mars now. This is Magic Maze on Mars, and it plays very similarly to Magic Maze. You're going to have a setup, and it'll be based on... The starting space here, you're going to get a certain number of tiles, and in this one it says that you're going to need the A tiles, you'll need four of them, and you won't need any more, which is advanced game mode. You're also going to be getting a board that will correspond with actions, so when you want somebody to do something, you'll tap with this thing here, just like you would with this thing here. These are basically do something pawns. Basically, when you, you can't speak in this game whatsoever to players, except during certain scenarios or certain times, like when the timer is being flipped or when you use one of these markers. So in order to coordinate with players, you'll have to put these pawns next to them. Or in this case, on this game, you'll actually be able to place them on one of these spaces here. This board over here is representing the domes in which you'll need civilians to enter. These are the tokens that will allow you to speak, and these are the tokens that are going to let you flip over the timer. You'll have resources and then bonus uh, things like these trash cans and slugs for the advanced mode, bridges as well, and then these people that need to get to the domes. And in this game, function similarly. So I'll take out the three players once again, has little threes on them, and give them to each player randomly. And then you're going to note that they do not look the same as this other game here. In fact, these ones here will tell you three different actions on each of them. This player here is able to spawn blue and purple crystals or resources. They can unlock spaces with the color of blue and purple, and they can move across blue and purple lo uh, locations. Uh, and this player here would do the same thing with yellow and green, and then brown and orange. In the game, the objective for this one with Magic Maze on Mars is you want to build domes and then spawn 
some people and get them into the domes. And how that works is pretty simple. You'll need resources. So this player here would take a resource and spawn it on a resource spawning space. It'll have a little symbol next to it. And then you're going to need to move that resource to a location that will allow you to get a new tile. Just like the search function in the previous game, this one will let the brown player move this brown to uh, this this blue through the brown way over there. This player over here will use his ability to move it to the green. And then this player over here will use his unlock ability to reduce this resource to nothingness, take a new tile out, find the arrow, just like in the previous game, and place it. And that's going to unlock more spaces on the board. And as you can see, there's the dome location. And that means you're going to need a yellow, a green, and a and a brown icon or resource in this area. And when that happens, you'll remove them and you'll put a dome down. So now once again, the blue player can spawn one of these guys here. The yellow player can move this over here and then removing this, the blue player will then place out a new location on the map and attach it accordingly. Now you can spawn purple, uh, spawn purple, spawn uh, brown. So brown can be placing here, blue can place over here. Oh, brown needs to go over there. Okay, so this player will move this here, this player will move this here, and here as well, green, and then blue and then orange. Now we have one of the three resources. When you get all three resources here, the brown, the yellow, and the green, any player can get rid of these guys here, put a dome out, and when all domes are formed, you will notice there's a space like this, and you're gonna go ahead and take a meeple and place it on the space. And for each dome, you're gonna to need to get that meeple to the dome, which will end the game. So in this case here, brown, orange, 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 green, blue, and orange, getting that guy there before the timer runs out is how you win the game. If you can get all the domes situated with people. There's also spaces like this one here. If you can get a resource over to this location here, uh, you can get rid of that resource. You'll spend, take one of these timer tokens, place it there, and be able to flip the timer, giving you more time throughout the game which is very useful. It'll let you talk, as well as whenever you spend these tokens here, you can talk or you can even switch resources between each other. So if you have a blue here and you want it to be a, a brown resource, you can spend this guy here and switch it. There's other advanced modes to the game, and we'll just talk about one of them, which is bridges. So if you have a location that requires a bridge, for instance, like let's just say that this one here, I'll just go ahead and place it like that, and you've got a resource like this and you want to get across, uh, the blue player can go ahead and place this blue there and then move the character across with more advanced modes of play. And obviously more advanced modes of play will include more resources to build more domes, allowing more citizens to come out to get to the locations where the domes are. And that's pretty much the idea of this game. Now, of course, there's unique little twists and turns like these, uh, <laughs> He's got these cute little uh, slime dudes here and garbage cans, which I won't explain. I'll just let you guys have a little something to check out when you buy or purchase the game if you'd like to. But there is advanced game modes that will increase the number of tiles, the different types of actions, just like in Magic Maze. Magic Maze on Mars has some unique little twists and turns to it as well. And that's basically how you play both games. That should give you a good understanding of how they work. I believe both of them have a single player mode. I know that Magic Maze definitely does. I didn't play the Magic Maze single um, on Mars single player mode so I couldn't tell you about it but what I can do is give you my review for both games in a multiplayer facet and of course I can give you a link to the live stream to take a look at that as well. Like I stated previously in the beginning, I'm not a huge like dexterity player, most like mostly because I'm not very good at them. But when they work well, these things are one of the most entertaining forms of games, especially when you play with players that are very, very like like intense and this game forces that intensity because you're also timed and you can't speak and you're constantly trying to get players to do what they need to do when they don't see it and no one can ever see everything on the board because they you know they're, they're focusing on one thing or another thing and so other players having to use the use the reminder token or the do something pawn here to allow them to realize oh this is what I need to do is nice and with the magic maze on Mars little board here using this saying hey Joey I need you to do something and I need that something to be creating a resource, gaining the timer, building a bridge is very, very nice. And one of my favorite additions to the new uh, On Mars game, uh, Magic Maze doesn't have that, but it does have the do something pawn allowing you to 
tap on the board furiously until they do exactly what you want them to do. This gives it a little bit more flexibility, allowing players to kind of tell the other players what needs to be done, but also still requiring that player that's telling the other player to actually utilize the board, and if they don't, it's kind of their fault. It also brings into uh, play these talking tokens, or if you don't need to use them as talking tokens, the resource changer tokens, which are nice, and the tokens indicating the speaking or uh, in, uh, the ability to be able to speak as well as to flip the timer. I like the fact that when you flip over the timers for the games, you're going to be switching roles, which is really, really cool. Uh, like I said, they both play very similarly. So if you like one, you're going to like the other. But what I will say, well, you're most likely going to, because On Mars is definitely a more complex game, in my opinion, not just because of the theme, I suppose, and the way the movement works, but the type of actions you're taking and remembering what comes next. In, in Magic Maze, you're basically taking a barbarian, you're moving it to its space, and then you're moving it to its exit. And that's what you need to know for the most part. You have a specific direction you're going to be moving in. In Magic Maze on Mars, you have two resources you're controlling, uh, where they go, how you remove them, and where you place them. And of course, the ability to build bridges uh, it gives you a little bit more now, variety and also a little bit more responsibility. And players, I think that's why they also included this board here, are going to be pestering you to make sure that you do specifically move pieces where they need to go. And of course, there's also uh, characters like the, the pawn that are going to pop out, the little like astronaut dude who needs to get back to his his, his place. You know, I, I think it's like families moving into Mars, basically, is the idea of the game. Whereas the other one is adventurers trying to get through a maze before the time runs out and they've uh, failed their adventure. Uh, both themes work very well. I mean, you know, I, I suppose any theme could work for these games, but I think they implemented them pretty well in these games. And really, you're going to be so focused on making sure you can get your pawns to where they need to go or your resources to be allocated to then get that little guy to move to the dome in time that you're not going to be thinking about the theme all that much because this is a very intense style game. It's not very complex to start off with, but as you progress throughout the different stages of the game, things start getting added. And that's true for both games. Uh, one of them being additional types of things like the slime, and the bridges and the ability to place the trash cans. And then for the magic maze, you're going to have the different characters with their unique abilities, as well as the different types of actions that you can take and how you go about getting out of the maze and the different types of tiles that are presented kind of pushes you along. Both games also have a scenario mode where you can just kind of play the game, which is nice after completing everything and you know all the rules. You can just simply shuffle them up and go at it, which is really great. If you like a dexterity game, if you like something that's challenging and also a little bit frustrating, you're going to really enjoy either one of these games. If you're looking for one that's going to be easier to play with younger kids, I would suggest Magic Maze. If you want something that's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more thinky, I would go with Magic Maze on Mars, just because it has that little extra added complexity and there's extra, there's more things, I suppose, that you can do, as well as things that you can utilize to your advantage. But in the other game, it's all about speediness. It's very simple as how it's laid out, but it's you have to be quick. And it's easy to lose this game. Uh, with, I prefer the game played between four and five, three to five players, I suppose, with either game is great. I think four is the beautiful uh, player count. Uh, with Magic Maze, it plays up to eight players. And then with Magic Maze on Mars, it plays up to six players. Uh, and I played it with all player counts except for seven and eight with Magic Maze and Magic Maze on Mars. They didn't have seven and eight players. Um, and I enjoy them both. These guys are going to be staying in my collection for a very long time. This is something I'm going to bring out, especially when it comes to family, when it comes to friends and kids, somebody who wants to play a dexterity game. If they like a game like Escape, this is something that they're going to want to jump towards too. And I really like the non-verbal communication and the look in people's eyes as they're moving these tokens around. Both of these guys would get my seal of approval. They're tons of fun. I've played them so many times and people continually ask me to play the game after coming over and never played games before because they're really easy to learn, they're really easy to set up, and the complexity builds over time, giving players an understanding of how the game works to start off with, and then adding that more advanced aspect to it, allowing them to have something unique in, and play each and every time. And you have like at least six rounds of different play before you can go into the hardcore meat of the games. Either way though, if you're interested in either game, Magic Maze or Magic Maze on Mars, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. You can pick them up. They're both from, they're both available in retail, uh, both uh, by sit down and if you'd like go ahead down there uh, for me 
100% game to pick up. At least one of them should be in your collection. I really, really enjoy them. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Magic Maze and Magic Maze on Mars. If either of these piqued your interest, let me know down below in the comment section what you think. Or if you played them and you didn't like them, tell me why or why not. I have a hard time figuring out any negatives towards these games, other than if you just don't like the mechanics of the games, you won't like this game. The you know craziness that, that, that takes place in this game. People can be frustrating, which can be part of the fun or not be. You can also check, take a look at Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's a game my wife is made, and we're going to be putting up on Kickstarter on March 2nd. You can go ahead and hit that link down below in the description for that as well, the notification on Kickstarter. It's a puzzle game featuring mermaids, kind of has a Tetrisy, crushy kind of feel to it, where you're going to be pulling shells and adding them to your player board and scoring objectives and secret objectives and mermaid powers and different types of tiles that stack on each other and all kinds of different things you can take a look at, as well as, of course, our Patreon and our Discord. We do a bunch of stuff, fun stuff on those things and help support us. We send out stuff in the mail to people like our Moonshell swag that's been sent out today. And if you're interested, you can do that as well. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Hit that notification bell button and the subscribe button on the channel. It promotes us. Check out the community polls and stuff like that that we're adding daily to kind of build some buzz around Moonshell. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to escaping the maze with you next time.